Hello and welcome. Today we're going to uh, download, install, and go through the configuration of the ECS Community Edition uh, OVA. So this is the single instance install. To get this, you're going to want to go to uh, Google or your uh, search engine of choice and uh, just Google or search for ECS Community Edition download. Um, a couple ways you can get to this. The first is going to the Dell Technologies website. Um, or you can just click directly on the uh, GitHub link. Um, this is what the Dell Technologies website looks like. You can see a little information about ECS. Um, but what we want to go to to actually download the Community Edition is the download link right here. It'll take us to the GitHub page. Uh, here we can see the different versions that are available for download. Uh, as you can see, the current one is ECS 3.4. So you can go ahead and click download there and it'll download the OVA which I have already done so that is right here so I'm going to show the install with uh, you know using VMware workstation however you could use this on a on an you know in a VMware environment uh, if you had that at your uh, disposal but this is going through uh, just kind of a simple lab slash demo setup uh, that you can do with VMware workstation so what we're going to do is hop into VMware workstation uh, some, some prerequisites for this that you will need is you will need uh, an NTP service. Uh, you will need, of course, networking settings, you know, IP address, uh, DNS address, things like that. You will need that, and we'll definitely walk through that uh, in this video. Uh, once you're within VMware Workstation, uh, to uh, uh, load the OVA, you just simply go to File and then Open. Uh, browse to where you have the... Uh, uh, downloaded it and simply click on open uh, here. You can rename it to whatever you want. I'm just going to Take off the dash install node Then you can go ahead and click import How long this will take will probably depend on your system like a lot of the uh, steps in here It'll just vary based on you know what type of resources you have available um, but I will try and let you know how long it takes on my system so you can compare that with yours to maybe see if something's you know not going right. Um, this is a process to where if you do uh, get a configuration wrong in the beginning, it could cause failures towards the end. So it's important to get everything right. Um, and I do definitely recommend taking snapshots um, at maybe a couple of different points. And I'll try and point those out uh, to let you know what's worked best for me. All right, now we have it imported. Uh, one thing you're gonna wanna do if you're on 3.4 like I am, is you're gonna wanna edit the virtual machine settings and uh, change the network adapter to NAT. This is something that I have to do. Um, your situation might be different. You might have different configuration from a networking standpoint, but this is something that I have to do uh, to get mine to work. So we're gonna change that to NAT. Um, now we'll have network connectivity, all that'll work fine. Uh, one other thing, if you're on a previous version um, before 3.4, I believe the OVA, whenever you imported it, it would have the memory at four gigs or something like that. So you would always have to manually come in here and adjust the amount of memory that's allocated to uh, this virtual machine. Um, I believe in anything before 3.4, so 3.3, 3.2, etc., it required 16 gigs of memory. As you can see in 3.4, it, um, automatically has it configured at 18 and you absolutely do need that amount of memory um, this will use all of it so this is uh this does take quite a bit of memory to run okay now we're going to power on the virtual machine get it started just take a few seconds All right, now we're able to log in. Um, I will try to put all the steps in the description of the video, as well as the default uh, credentials. Uh, but the login, the username is admin, and the password is change me with a capital C and a capital M. So if I can get this typed in correctly, change me. All right, we are in. Uh, the first thing I always like to do is go ahead and uh, set my static IP address and, and network settings. Uh, so we're just gonna do an NMTUI, go to edit connections and go to edit. 
I'm going to set to IPv4 manual configuration. I'm going to go ahead and add in my addresses right here. Of course, you won't want to use my settings that I'm putting in here. Uh, you will want to, of course, you know, make sure that your network settings match your network uh, configuration and scheme that you have set up. All right, so I'm just going to double check all these. They look good. Go to OK. Go back. I always like to go in and deactivate and activate the connection a couple times. That just seems to make sure that uh, uh, it sticks, kind of, if you will. Uh, then we're go going to go to OK. Uh, one thing I always like to do is uh, come into a, a different host running and just make sure I can ping it. Make sure it is pingable. Go ahead and ping. Okay, and we're getting a response, so that's a very good sign. At that point, if you do not get a response, then you've got something going on either with your VMware uh, workstation networking settings or your networking settings somewhere. Uh, once you set the IP information within the uh, virtual machine, then it should be pingable. If it's not, then you want to stop and, and figure that out. All right, next, in order to continue on with the uh, configuration, what we need to do is edit the configuration file uh, so the script can install the ECS software. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to change our directory to ECS uh, Community Edition. Uh, from there, we're going to need to use a text editor. In this case, we're going to use vi to edit the configuration file. So vi deploy.yml. Alright, so this is where we're going to uh, just change a few settings to um, to let that script run. So I'll point out everything that we need to change. Like I mentioned earlier, I'll try to uh, put uh, in the description of the video below all of the steps and commands that you'll need to do this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So the first thing you need to change is the install node. That's going to be 10.20, which is what I set the IP address of this virtual machine as in NMTUI earlier. The next thing we need to change is uh, just scroll down to DNS and NTP servers. So we need to change those. So that is 10.6 in my case for both of those. And we're going to scroll down. Uh, the ECS block device, we need to change that from uh, slash dev slash VDA to SDB. And we're going to change the member IP to the same IP you set the uh, VM IP to, so 10.20 in my case. And then the last thing I believe we'll need to change is this last uh, ECS block devices for the storage pool. We need to change that to uh, SDB. All right, from here, you can leave everything else default. These are um, what it's going to name and what it's going to call um, you know, your storage pools and the virtual data center, all of that stuff. Um, uh, you can just leave uh, default, I always do, unless of course you want to change it to something custom. Um, but really the point of this is really just get a look and feel of how ECS works and how you can use it and how, how you can interface with it. So from here, we are done editing. That's really all you need to do to change it. Uh, so from here, we're just going to uh, do a colon, WQ. That's going to save it. And then we need to um, uh, run a command update underscore deploy. We have to enter our password again. Once again, that is change me, capital C, capital M. I'm going to do that. Let that run. This usually takes about 45 seconds for me. That seems pretty consistent. Um, but like I said, uh, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. From here, you can scroll down to uh, read every word of the EULA, uh, or you can hit Q if you've already read it before and have it memorized, and then you're going to need to accept it. Type yes. Like I said, this will take about, uh, about 45 seconds, so I may cut this out or I may just leave it in because it's not too long. Okay wasn't too long at all. Uh, so now that we've updated the configuration file, we've accepted the EULA, we can go ahead and uh, uh, launch the first step to actually install the ECS software. So to do that, we're going to uh, 
uh, type in OVA step one. All right, and this takes about 40 something seconds as well. So I'll probably cut this out and just go back to the end. Okay, as you can see, it has completed successfully. Um, it, once this runs all the way through, you'll see a lot of uh, light and uh, darker blue uh, messages that says changed and okay. If you see anything red or failed, of course that's bad. Uh, at that point, you'll wanna, you know, there's something wrong with your uh, network settings or something you did in the configuration file. Uh, maybe you forgot to change one of the storage devices to SDB, something like that. So you want to go back and change uh, change that. That's why, um, if, th if this is your first time doing this, I always recommend, uh, you know, once you've imported the OVA and you've got the networking settings uh, set and it's pingable, I always like to shut down the VM, take a snapshot. Um, that way, if I ever have anything, any problems, I can just revert to the snapshot. I'm back right where I was uh, pretty pretty quickly. So that, that, that really just helps out if, you know, if this is your one of your first few times and you're having problems being able to uh, just revert back to something a lot quicker that way you don't have to go through those uh, beginning steps um, all the time uh, from here what you're going to want to do is is actually wait um, this is kind of something finicky i've learned with uh, the 3.4 ova is um, before you go on with the next step you want to let um, everything start all the services start things like that as you can see if you look um, you know, a couple lines up from where the cursor is. It's enabling ECS services, all of those kinds of things. Uh, usually I'll just uh, go somewhere else, get another cup of coffee, uh, do something else I need to do, and just let it sit here for five or ten minutes. Uh, one thing you can do to check uh, to see if it's if all the services are, are good is, is actually go to a web browser and hit the IP address that we set. In my case, it'll be 192.168.10.20. And usually if the web UI pops up, then I'll call that good and continue on with the, the next step, which I will uh, do in just a moment. Okay, I've given it about 10 minutes or so. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and check to see uh, in the browser if um, I'm able to hit the web UI. Uh, like I mentioned before, for if I'm able to, then usually I'll continue on with step two and it'll work just fine. So I'm going to go to uh, 192.168.10.20. All right, so this is good. Go ahead, advance, proceed, and here we have the uh, the interface. So I'm going to exit out of this and just go ahead and continue on uh, with step two. So for this step. It's, uh, you only have to change one uh, number. So we're gonna go OVA step two instead of step one. Okay, so if you do get errors saying uh, pinging management API endpoint until ready and it's not able to, uh, usually that's a sign that you didn't give it enough time to initialize all the services and everything. Um, that That's where it can get kind of finicky in, in the 3.4 implementation. Uh, in my experience, most of the time, if you run into that issue, then eventually it's just going to fail out or it's going to try and configure some things that it's not going to be able to and they just fail out. Um, at that point, what I always do just to make sure that everything's nice and fresh is just revert back to an earlier snapshot that I've, that I've taken and uh, go through the steps again and just give it more time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this off and just come back once uh, OVA step two has completed. Um, usually this takes... Um, something like five, five, five to 10 minutes, I think usually in my case. After giving it plenty of time, uh, this is what the screen should look like once OVA step two has completed. As you can see, it says uh, creating all buckets has been okay, creating all configured buckets, um, all good to go. Uh, so from here, we can hop back over to our web browser and then type in the IP address that we gave it. Uh, before it should pop up uh, from here the actual username is going to be root and the password is the same so change me with a capital C and capital M go ahead and log in and then it's going to prompt us to change our password immediately so I'm going to go ahead and do that all right it's going to say our session has expired because we changed our password, so we'll have to re-log in. Okay. 
Okay, and then from here we can see the ECS interface. We can see we've got one node and one disk. Uh, and then we can see we've got some capacity available, available etc. Uh, from here, uh, one last step to make sure everything is going as it should be. You just go to manage and then storage pools. And we can see that storage pool one is ready to use. Um, and the status is partially ready. So from here, uh, you can access this with an S3 browser or however you want to access your, your object storage. Uh, and I will show how to do that in a, uh, a later video. All right, thanks for watching.